Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. When you think of Ken Stabler, you probably think of one of the greatest quarterbacks of the 1970s. Even if it took him way too long to make it to Cannon, he's in the Hall of Fame for a reason. He led the league in touchdown passes twice. He won an incredible 72% of his games as the starting quarterback of the Oakland Raiders. He led the league in completion percentage twice. He made it to four Pro Bowls, was named a first-team All-Pro in 1974, and helped guide the Raiders to their first Super Bowl in franchise history, where he led them to victory at Super Bowl XI. The 1970s were very kind to Stabler. The 1980s? Not so much. In all five years that Stabler played in the 80s, he threw more interceptions and touchdowns, and looked like a shell of himself. But there was one game in particular that stands out, because there was one game that was so bad that he decided to retire immediately after. He hung it up in the middle of the season, and basically said that he couldn't do this anymore. In a 1984 game against the Dallas Cowboys, Stabler performed so poorly that he announced his retirement shortly after the game. And this is the story behind the game that caused Stabler to call it quits. Before I talk about the game itself, we need some context heading into the game. To fully understand this story, we have to go back to 1980, when the Houston Oilers and Oakland Raiders made one of the most famous trades in the history of the sport. We had a swap of starting quarterbacks. The Raiders got Dan Pastorini, and the Oilers got Ken Stabler. Head coach Bunk Phillips believed that even though Stabler was past his prime, that he was the missing piece to help the Oilers get over the hump and to the Super Bowl. Alas, he was not. He had one of the worst years of his career at the time, throwing 13 touchdowns and 28 interceptions. While the Oilers went 11-5 that season, it was in spite of Stabler. It was mainly because Earl Campbell was an absolute beast. After the season, Phillips was fired in somewhat of a controversial move. He went to the New Orleans Saints, while Stabler stayed in Houston for another season. Things didn't get much better under new coach Ed Biles, as for the first time in his career, he was on a team with a losing record. Stabler was released after the 1981 season, and reunited with Bum Phillips in New Orleans. Bum still loved the guy, and with Archie Manning coming off of an awful 1981 season and leaving his prime, he wanted Stabler. Things didn't exactly go great. In those first two seasons, Stabler threw 15 touchdowns and 28 interceptions across 22 games. He posted a passer rating of 65.3 which was 15 points lower than what he was doing in Oakland, and was even worse than what he was posting in Houston. However, despite his struggles, and despite a poor 1983 season, where he completed just 56% of his passes while throwing 9 touchdowns and 18 picks, with his completion percentage and touchdown-to-interception ratio being the worst of his career since 1971, he stayed on. He turned down a 7-figure contract offer from the Memphis Showboats of the USFL to remain in New Orleans. And Bum wanted him back. Bum said that Stabler had a spot with the team as long as he wants it. However, as the Saints would find out, Stabler wouldn't want it a whole lot longer. During the offseason, the Saints acquired Jets starting quarterback and former first-round pick Richard Todd. The decision to acquire Todd boiled down to three things. Number one, even though Bum wanted Stabler back, he was clearly not the same quarterback that he once was. Number two, no one really knew how Stabler would hold up in 1984. He had notoriously bad knee problems by this point, and had to get arthroscopic surgery in the offseason. And number three, Stabler sort of hinted that this was going to be his last year. There was always a question of whether or not Stabler would hang it up. Heck, he did it for a bit in 1981 after Bum left Houston. Stabler made it known to Bum that this was probably going to be his last year, and that Bum even had to talk him out of retirement. When the 1984 season started, Stabler was hoping that he get to be the team's starting quarterback. However, it was Richard Todd who got the job. For the first time in over a decade, Stabler was riding the bench. While he came off the bench twice, both in losses against the 49ers and the Rams, he would be asked to come off the bench once more. And that's what did him in. And that takes us to this game, October 21st, 1984, a Monday night edition of Sunday Night Football between the Dallas Cowboys and the New Orleans Saints. It's a nationally televised game on ABC, with the whole country watching America's team take on a 3-4 Saints team that absolutely needed to win this game if they wanted to keep their playoff hopes realistically alive at the midway point. New Orleans had never won in Dallas before, having gone 0-6. They were hoping that the seventh time would be the charm. And in what was looking like a major upset, the Saints were looking good. They led it 27-6 through three quarters. Richard Todd wasn't great. He was just 5-16 for 16 with a passer rating of 44. But he didn't have to be. With guys like Earl Campbell and George Rogers, the Saints were just running it down the throat of the Cowboys. 
and with just under eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, New Orleans was still leading at 27 to 13, still in a pretty good position to win the game. That's when Todd got rocked by eventual Pro Bowl defensive back Bill Bates. He was down in pain. He was not going to be able to continue the rest of the way. Time for Ken Stabler to come in off the bench. All he's got to do is hold on to this lead and not play too poorly. Unfortunately for him, he picked it out the worst possible time to do exactly the opposite. By the time Stabler came into the game, there were four minutes left, and the Cowboys had driven down the field to get right back in it on a 12-yard touchdown pass by Danny White to Mike Renfro. Time for Stabler to shine. After his first pass falls incomplete, it's third down. And oh no, that's not good. Stabler fumbles and it's recovered by Jim Jeffcoat in the end zone for a touchdown. From down 27 to six entering the fourth, the Cowboys had just tied it up at 27 apiece. On the next drive for the Saints, Stabler has a chance to redeem himself. He does not. First play and Stabler throws a duck. He looked like he was putting all of his strength into that pass and it was still nowhere close despite being a 10 yard play. Kind of hard to watch. After some quick passes with some yards after the catch, the Saints are past midfield with a shot at maybe winning this one. On third down, Stabler drops back to pass. And oh god, what are you doing? Across his body while being hit over the middle of the field. That is a recipe for disaster if I've ever seen one. Saints turn it over. Two drives for Stabler, two absolutely ugly turnovers. The Saints defense forces a stop and New Orleans gets the ball near midfield with just under 50 seconds left in regulation. First play, and I'm not entirely sure what happens here. The referees ruled it an incomplete pass, but you be the judge of that because to me, this looked like a fumble. After another incomplete pass, on third down, Stabler misses a wide open receiver down the sideline. He had Jeff Groth wide open, and it would have gotten Morton Anderson in field goal range. Instead, he overshoots him badly, and it gets picked off by Ron Fellows. Three drives for Stabler, and three turnovers. We go into overtime, where Dallas wins the toss, drives down the field, and wins it on a 41-yard field goal by Raphael Septien. The Cowboys completed the comeback, thanks in part to Ken Stabler playing terribly off of the bench. Here was Stabler's final stat line. He was 2 for 9 with 34 yards passing, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. The two completions were a slant route and a screen pass. He also had a fumble that went for six points the other way. In the three drives that Stabler was a part of, excluding the final drive of regulation where the Saints just took a knee to take it to overtime, Stabler turned it over three times. He finished with a passer rating of 3.2, which is 13 times worse than if you did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. It was legitimately tough to watch. And after the game, he hung it up. He knew he was done. His agent made a statement for him, saying under the circumstances, he thought it was best to retire. Later in the week, Stabler himself elaborated on the decision. Part of it was that apparently, Bum told him that he was going to be placed on injured reserve. The other part was that he just knew that he didn't have it anymore. He said, I was unhappy with my contribution and unhappy where the team was, and the inevitability that I wasn't going to get the chance to do anything. So I just want to leave with class. It was an unceremonious end to an otherwise incredible career. We've seen some pretty painful final games by league legends. Dan Marino got blown out 62-7 in his final game. Joe Namath threw no touchdowns and four interceptions in his final game. Drew Brees threw three picks and had a 38.1 passer rating in his final game. But this might be the worst, because for every quarterback that goes out on top, you have guys like Ken Stabler who go out at the lowest of lows. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGear9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who welcome the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.